Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to this video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a deeper network device into your Wi-Fi system. If you haven't watched my previous video on the general setup and unboxing, the link is in the description. Make sure you go check that video out first. And this video is specifically dedicated to those who have all-in-one modem because this is my current Wi-Fi system, which I have an all-in-one modem slash Wi-Fi. It really took me a while to figure the best setting for for my router. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I do my settings and how I do my routing. I'll link some videos in the description below as well. I watched all those videos and they are really helpful. So maybe they can give you a hand too, just in case you follow exactly the settings I mentioned here and it's still not working for you because again, each one of our setting and setup is different, okay? So without further ado, let's get into it. So a few preparation you want to do is number one, you want to locate your current all in one modem and you want to be able to log in to it. So a lot of these modem, you're going to see a sticker on it and there is admin login to the dashboard as well as the IP address. Make sure you have access to that. And the second thing what I had to go buy and to make this work is a secondary router. So now it's up to you, right? If you want this router to be really good quality, I'll link Link a few in the description. I've tested about three of them and the best one I found is uh, basically a gaming router and it's working beautifully so far. The reason you want to buy a router is because we want to connect the deeper mini with this new router instead of overriding our all-in-one modem. If you do this setup, what's going to happen is that you're going to have a two different networks and you're going to have the options to switch them back and forth. In my daily life, my all-in-one works really well. There's no disconnection, none of that issue. So if anything happened or emergency, I can always switch back to my all in one. So my Wi Fi will work no matter what. Okay, the second router is really dedicated for deeper network. Some people will overwrite their current existing one. So that is one of the options you can do. But I just wanted to let you know that this setup, we're creating two different networks. Third item you probably need is probably an adapter. This could be a USB C to Ethernet adapter because we're going to reset the router or if your computer already has an ethernet cable port then you basically don't need any adapter i'm going to link the adapter in the description as well make sure you go there and check it out and grab the right one then followed by an ethernet cable you can get cat 7 or cat 8 i'll give you exactly the one that i purchased the reason we only need one ethernet cable is because deeper network comes with one cable you just need one extra ethernet cable so two ethernet cable in total. Now I'm going to show you exactly how I did my settings on both of my all-in-one modem as well as the secondary or the new Wi-Fi router. Step number one, you're going to log in to your current all-in-one modem. The IP address should be on your modem box. If you don't see that, I'm currently using Mac. The way I can have access to it is click on my Wi-Fi icon and click on Network Preferences. And now if I click on Advanced, and click on TCP slash IP. This is going to display to you your IPv4 address. You see the subnet mask as well as a router. So this router IP is what we need to grab. And you want to open a website browser and you want to type in this IP address. The username normally is admin and the password you're going to find it on the box. And once you log in, each one of our brand is different. The router provider is different. So we might have a different structure and layout. However, the basic terms should be straightforward and identical. I came to my network. There's one option that says LAN, L-A-N. So what you want to do is you want to kind of take a note on this LAN IP. This is really, really important because we want to set up the second Wi-Fi router that doesn't interfere with this one. It's really important. So you should be able to see a private IP address as 192.168.something. These two are the information we need for the second router. In the second 
second setting I came to underneath LEN, it says bridge. There's a technique you basically can Google it. It's called a bridge. Basically, we set two Wi-Fi routers and let them communicate each other. Really important part is that I didn't connect the full bridge. If I do a full bridge, what really happens here is that my current Wi-Fi modem will stop working and only passing the signal to the second router. So it's really important that I set it to LAN 1. That means only one of the Ethernet ports on this Wi-Fi router is going to be bridged to the second router. If you don't have this option, I would say maybe this is optional. I just happened to see this option and I checked on it and it worked really well for me. If you don't see this option on your setting, maybe just skip this part. The setup should be able to work. Now I'll come to Wi-Fi and I come to 2.4 gigahertz. One of the videos I watched, I will link it in the description. It says the one that doesn't interfere, it should be one, six or 11. So I pick number six. Basically we lock this 2.4 gigahertz into one channel. So it won't jump around and interfere with uh, the second router. Come to five gigahertz and I set this channel to 64, which is all the way at the bottom. The reason again to do this is to, we want to separate the channel. So they're not going to overlap with each other. You will see later that on the second router, we're going to a different channel. That's how we're able to not let them overlap each other. If you don't have this many, maybe just assign something and remember it because we're not going to assign the second router on the same setting. That's all I did in terms of my current all-in-one modem. My modem had to do a reboot. Just let you guys know that you might do a reboot and come back to this screen. Now what I did is I grabbed an Ethernet cable. I connected to my LAN 1 port on my current all-in-one modem. You can see in this photo that it's marked number 1, 2, and 3. I just simply connected this Ethernet cable to the LAN 1. And now what we want to do is that we're going to grab this second Wi-Fi router. If you have a used one laying around, you can use it. If you don't have it, you can buy one on Amazon or Craigslist. Fortunately, I found this gaming router on Craigslist for about $100. So this brand new one is actually $340 to $400 and I got it for $100. So if you go out and look for deals and there's definitely good Wi-Fi router that's out there and people are not using, definitely take that as your advantage. And now what we want to do is we want to grab this second Wi-Fi router. Obviously, you want to power this router. First thing we're going to do is you're going to see at the back of this router, there should be a small little pinhole. We're going to grab a small little needle and insert this needle into this small little hole and hold it for about 5 to 10 seconds. This should do a reset on this new Wi-Fi router. Now you want to grab another Ethernet cable with adapter. Depends on your machine. If your computer has an Ethernet port, you don't need adapter. But if you don't, you need a USB-C or USB 3.0 to Ethernet adapter. And now you want to connect this router to your computer with this cable. And also make sure your Wi-Fi is turned off. So we're not going to use Wi-Fi in this process. I'm a Mac user, so I click on my Wi-Fi, came to Network Preferences, and now you can see the Wi-Fi is red, it's turned off. However, the Ethernet is green. Once it connected, you should be able to see the Wi-Fi router IP address again. You can see here, this is 192.168.0.1. This is the default version for this exact brand. By the way, the brand I use on router is a TP-Link. If you want to do exact the same settings, maybe get a TP-Link will be a better choice choice for you. Grab this router IP address 192.168 and you want to come to a website browser and type that in the address field. Now you can see that it brought me to the first page which is set up an admin password. Once I set up my password, it lead me to the next page. So this is the TP link router dashboard. I went straight to advanced. So we're going to do a few tweaks here. I'm going to show you exactly. Little background story about this entire setting. At the beginning, I actually went for a completely different different setting. And what I noticed was I was okay with one device logging to this router. However, as soon as I introduced the second device into this router, then the deeper network started to have this lost connection and it's trying to do everything again. However, I want to shout out to a person on Discord. His username is WWLADA. So this is extremely kind person. He kind of guide me through on the settings that works for him. And he's the person that helped me with these 
settings. So first tweak was underneath the network, we're going to see LAN, LAN. I tweaked the IP address a little bit, so I changed the IP address from the default 192.168.0.1. I modified it to 192.168.2.1. And the sub mask is remaining the same, which is 255.255.255.0. Once you enter these numbers, click on save. And also remember, once this address is changed, you are no longer able to log into this router with the old IP. So you're going to use this dot two dot one from now on. Okay. And second option is come to DHCP server. What we want to do here is we want to enable DHCP server. The reason we want to turn this DHCP server on is because I want to use multiple device to be able to log into this Wi Fi router. So previously, I was having issue that's because I disabled the DHCP server. So basically, there's only one IP address pool to assign to device. That explains why every time when I sign with a second device, the first one gets kicked out and a deeper network has to restart again. So I strongly recommend you to turn on DHCP server. So this way, every time you sign a new device, it'll automatically grab an IP from the IP address pool and assign it to this new device you just connected. And on the default gateway, I didn't touch it, is basically 192.168.2.1. And now come to wireless and we're going to quickly assign the channel and we should be good to go. And in here, you can see the wireless setting. I have a smart connect disabled or unchecked and I have 2.4 Hertz enabled. Really important part is you can see if at the bottom of this 2.4 Hertz page, I have something called a channel. So instead of automatically assign channel and assign the channel 11 to it. Remember the first router, we set channel six. This new router, we set the channel to number 11 and the scroll all the way down. There's another channel field for five Hertz. In here, you can see I have a whole bunch of options. So specifically, I just set it to one, five, seven. So anything that's different than the first router. Again, the whole purpose of this is to not let them overlap each other. Okay, one, five, seven is what I signed to. Once I'm done with that, click on save and click on OK. That's all I did in terms of this second Wi Fi router settings. And what you want to do now is turn off this router. And now you want to connect the deeper network device in between your all in one modem and this new Wi Fi router, just make sure in between your Wi Fi router and your all in one modem, there is deeper network device that's connected with Ethernet cable. Two things I want to mention here really important. Number one is that deeper mini device, it doesn't matter the port direction. So there's no in and out order. So you can basically connect with uh, any of the port. Second really important thing is on this secondary router, we're going to use the WAN port. So look for a port that's a blue in my case, or somewhere it says internet or W A N. If you see any one of these words, you're going to connect the Ethernet cable to this port. So we're going to ignore all the LAN ports and we're going to go straight to the WAN port. Quick setup recap. What's happening here is my only one modem. I'm only using LAN one with the Ethernet cable coming out of my only one going into one of the ports on deeper mini. And then the other port comes out is going into this WAN port or internet port on this secondary router. Really, really important part. Otherwise, it won't work. When you connect the deeper device, turn on the new router. And now you want to enable your Wi Fi on your network and you should be able to see this new network option. That's TP link. This is the new router that we set, right? You click on it. You want to enter the password you set to. You can see here I connected to the second router, which is the deeper network. The way we can tell is come to a new browser and typing 34.34.34.34 or 11.22.33. 344. And then you click on enter. And this is going to prompt you to this dashboard, you want to enter your username and password here the first time is admin and admin. If you haven't watched my video on unboxing and setup, make sure you do because I cover all these in detail and you click on login, and you should be able to log into your dashboard just like this. A quick recap and summary of what we did. Okay, first of all, 
we went to all-in-one modem. We did a few tweaks there in terms of grabbing their IP address and tweak around with the channel. Again, this is a minimized tweak that we did on all-in-one. Second thing what we did is we grabbed a new router, either purchased or used one, and we did a reset. I went to land underneath network and modified the IP address to 192.168.2.1 because it's different from my original all-in-one modem, which is 192.168.1.245. From there, I enabled the HCP server, so it will automatically populate this IP address pool and automatically assign device. Depends on how many devices are connected to this router. And from there, I basically modify the channel for 2.4 and 5 hertz and turn this router off. Connect the deeper mini in my case, turn on this router, and now I'm able to log in to this new Wi-Fi router. So moving on forward, if you want to go back to your previous internet, come to Wi-Fi and select the previous internet network option. If you want to enjoy the deeper network feature, you simply switch the Wi-Fi to the new router that you got, and now you get to enjoy the deeper network DPN features. A little quick tip here is that if I come to network preferences, you're going to see one option says automatically join this network. That means every time when I restart my computer, if I want to automatically jump on deeper network, I can give it a check. This will automatically join. If I don't, it will automatically connect it to my first all-in-one, which is my original Wi-Fi. Every time if I want to switch to deeper network, I just have to manually click on that Wi-Fi name. That's a quick little tip for you. Uh, maybe go get a TP-Link router. It works really well and all their dashboard is about the same. I linked a few in the description. Maybe you can check them out. If you're interested in, grab it from Amazon and get it delivered and give it a try. So you can really rewatch this video and do exactly the same same settings that I did, okay? And do me a favor, guys, if this video helped you out in any shape or form, drop some comments in below and give it a like on this video so algorithm can show it to more and more people who are frustrated with their setup and couldn't get everything to work. Also, I recommend you guys to join Deeper Network Discord group. The link is in the description. Definitely go check out the description of this video. There's lots of useful links and hopefully you can get everything set up and up running with no time. And this is Tario Sultan signing out. Thank you for watching my channel and I will see you guys in the next one. Cheers. <laughs>